Hello, welcome to the next Flip Preaching video. My name's Andy. We're looking today at Matthew 10, 40 to 42, which follows on directly from last week. It's a very short little passage. And the, the bigger context of this is, um, this is comes right at the end of a fairly large section, which we've been following over the last few weeks of Jesus sending out his um, disciples, his apostles, to um, to do the work on his route on his behalf. And this is the, the end of that, kind of rounding it all up. And Jesus says that whoever welcomes you welcomes me, which is awesome. When we, when we do things in, um, when we do things for God, it's as if we actually represent God. God's there um, through us, which is awesome, a bit mind-bending. Um, then it um, talks about um, receiving other people, receiving people who are who are doing God's work. So we're going to have a look because it's just a short passage. I thought it'd be interesting to have a look at some of the Greek text which um, Matthew Matthew wrote because there's quite a lot of poetry and symmetry in this. Um, and we do a little bit of Bible journaling as well. I've got a few bits to stick in too. Um, so if you have a look at the the sheet which has got the, the Greek um, language and an English translation beneath it. If you can't read Greek, I can't read Greek very well either. Um, you see that there are lots of words which are repeated, and um, particularly the word which are translated as receives on this sheet or in the NRSV Bible, which I'm using here as welcomes. Um, it's all about welcoming, all about welcoming people who are doing God's work. And the promise is that when we welcome people, we we get reward. We get a, we get a reward. So I want to think a little bit about what this welcoming, receiving means. What does it mean to receive someone? Um, I think the word is deliberately ambiguous. Um, it means it means both to receive someone, as in to show them hospitality, to welcome someone into your home or wherever um, wherever that may be. But also it means to receive their message into your heart. So it's a, it's a way of saying that we need to be receptive people, um, hospitable people, and also having our ears open, our eyes open, our hearts open to what people will bring of God. So if you have a look at the sheet, um, the first, it's got three kind of chunks, this passage. Um, so verse 40 has this really neat relationship. The one who receives you, me receives. The one me receives, receives the one who sent me. So there's this symmetry between the first line, second line, and the first half of each line, and the second half of each line. And it's amazing. When, when, when we do things in the name of God, it's as if God is there with us. The second chunk... Um, again, it's very, very neatly structured. The one receiving a prophet in the name of a prophet, the reward a prophet will take. And then the second line is the same, but prophet is switched for a righteous person. The one receiving a righteous, it kind of, well, we don't know what that means really. In the name of a righteous, the reward of a righteous will take. And because the first and the second line are basically the same, this is a this is a kind of form of Jewish poetry. Um, the, the Jewish people wrote their poetry in this way. Well, this is one of the ways they did it, where they had line the first line and then the second line said the same thing in just with a couple of words twisted, twisted, adjusted, just to make them, just to make the point. So it draws our attention to the this prophet righteous. So this is talking about whenever we receive a hero of the faith, whenever. Whenever someone comes as a prophet or a righteous person, when we receive them in our in our homes, in our church, in our in our reading, whatever whatever it is, we also receive their reward. It's as if when we when someone brings God's word and message and uh, and hope to us, we we receive that in ourselves and we get all the reward that they do, which is. Again, a bit of a strange idea, but a very, very good one. And then the last bit. I wonder, actually, because this is so tightly structured, that second bit, I wonder 
whether that was a kind of pre-existing statement, whether that was a, an old poem which Jesus knew and was reciting. And he added this last bit on. Whoever gives a drink to one of these little ones, whoever gives a drink to a little one. So on the one hand, we've got the prophets and the righteous people. But Jesus says, but whoever gives a drink of water to a little one in the name of a disciple, they shall not lose their reward. Jesus is saying that the, whatever we do to the, to the littlest person, not literally smallest person, although that's important too, um, we, we don't lose the reward then. That's, it's a blessed thing to receive and welcome little people. Now, I think that works in two ways. Firstly, in terms of children, we sometimes think that children perhaps can't teach us anything, but this is saying the opposite, that when we children bear God's message and God's good news to us. But also it means people who are less regarded in society. So people who are perhaps on the margins of things, not the, not the stars, but the, the ordinary people. They're people we need to, to welcome and realise that they carry God's message too. So um, I've got a couple of little, I've designed a couple of little drawings that I'm going to stick into my Bible. This first one um, is a picture of a glass of water because that's, that's all it says in verse 42 that we do to show our, our welcome to these little ones, just to offer them a glass of water, the most basic thing you can offer. And it gets noticed, it's important. So this is a glass of water with ice cubes in and um, saying kindness is noticed. I don't think they would have had ice cubes in those days, but we could. So kindnesses towards people, even the smallest people, the littlest people, the most insignificant people is always noticed. And throughout this, this passage, if you notice, it starts off with the righteous and the prophets, and it ends up with the little ones. So it has the whole spectrum of people. And this, again, is, a, I believe, a sort of form of uh, a, a, a literary technique that's used in the, the scriptures quite a lot called a merism. Now, this is a word that I've learned quite recently. Um, a merism is where you say, the, say one thing at one extreme and another thing at the other extreme, and you mean everything in between. So when you say... I've searched high and low for it. It doesn't mean you just look in the high places and the low places. It means you look everywhere. And this, is, this technique is often used in the scriptures. So when it says that from the righteous, when you work on the righteous and the prophets, you receive a reward when you welcome and give a cup of water to the little ones. So it's going from the highest to the lowest. And it means everyone in between. So I've got a, done a rainbow there to, to indicate that just as light comes in all kinds of colours from the, the largest wavelength, which is red, through to the shortest wavelength, which is the violet end of the spectrum, we should be receptive to God's messengers, regardless of their status. So be receptive to all kinds of light. God works through all people. And... Of course, there's the message that becomes more personal to us. As well as receiving people, we are the people. We are the people who bring God's news, bring the good news. Whether you're uh, an, an educated, trained person in the works of God, or whether you're more like a little person, whether you think of yourself as a little person, or somewhere in between, all of us have a vital part to play in the building and furthering the kingdom of God. So be encouraged that when people, um, when, when you bring God's news, you are acting on behalf of God. Whenever anyone welcomes you in Jesus' name, Jesus goes with you. There's nothing that disqualifies you from, from being a messenger of God, a worker of God. It's not just for the people who are trained. Okay, so I wonder what you have made of that. Um, I wonder which bits of this passage stick out for you, uh, what, you've, what you've gained from it. 
Okay, well, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.